So that leads us into um, your homeowner decided that they want a generator and now you have to figure out how to size it. Um, that's actually not all that difficult. Um, you need to take a look at a couple of different options available. What are the needs of the customer? Um, we're going to look at, are they just looking to back up a few selected circuits? Let's say they have a sump pump that they're worried about, a well pump, the refrigerator, and either their home heating or air conditioning solution. They only want to back up those circuits. They're okay with um, not having access to every electrical appliance in their house during an outage. And then you have the other people who say, I don't care, I want to run it all. That's actually becoming more prevalent because people are so dependent on having all their electrical conveniences available to them. So those are choices that the homeowner and you will need to talk about. So let's say your customer decides they want to just do the selected um, systems. They're only going to back up the circuits that are critical during the power outage for them. Things that you're going to want to counsel them on are air conditioning, particularly um, in some of the southern climates. Um, that's going to be a big issue or if they have health issues and they can't um, withstand the heat. Um, you may want to back that up and realize that air conditioning demands a larger starting load. So that's going to make a significant difference on the size of the generator. Another area is heating. And again, um, the same issues. Um, it could be the frozen pipes they want to prevent, but it may also be health issues and keeping the family safe and warm. Refrigeration, we talked about. That's a no-brainer. Nobody wants the meltdown. And um, cooking, um, they may want to um, they may want to have one cooking appliance, but maybe not all of them. So make sure you understand which ones they want. Um, home office is going to be critical to those people who are working at home, which is a growing contingency. And then you finally have your communications. Um, people are going to want to be able to get um, access to the outside world during an emergency situation, um, and that's a safety and a, and a convenience at, um, situation. Um, Go ahead, Nat. Well, I, was just, I saw her nod when you were talking about a home office. She was nodding her head. Do you have an office at home? Yeah. yeah and now, how important is that to keep your business going? And this is where we're talking again about the trends changing. You don't have to look around. Here's someone right here who her home office is going to be critical to be up and running. So there is going to be a larger and larger market for these generators. And it's time to get up to speed on them. And with Melanie's help here, and I know I learn a lot every time I work with her, with her help here, we're all going to be uh, experts and be able to spread the word that you don't have to worry about your home office going down or special needs people being left out in the cold. Right. Another consideration is the water heater that they happen to have. Um, that's going to make a difference on the size of the generator, and you need to understand what, what type of a water heater they have. Um, if they have a tankless water heater from our friends over at Renai, it's going to have little or no load, so you're not going to have to um, upsize your generator for that. If they have an electrical water heater, um, that's going to take a significantly more load. And I'll guarantee you, most people are going to want hot water during an outage because nobody wants that icy cold shower. So um, again, understanding the, the water heater type is a, is a big issue. Um, and then you need, to, um, in certain areas, people have the basements. You have to back up that sump pump. And if they have well water, you have to back up the well water. One very important point to uh, consider is also, listen to everything we just talked about. Melanie just mentioned the tankless water heaters running on propane or natural gas. We mentioned your gas dryers, your gas stoves, and also our generators were running on the propane or the natural. So this is a one fuel fits all in your house. So it's really a, a, a good economical system. You're not having five different fuel things or different electric bills it's really one main source of fuel now to power your own home and to keep your home powered if you lose that electrical power right so that really covers the essential load situation but you again as we mentioned you're going to have people who just want to power up the entire house it's going to take a larger generator but it's going to give them greater convenience so how do you do that how do you size that um, well, one, one method is to have an electrical contractor come out and size up everything in the house for the electrical load, and um, that's probably the most accurate. Another method, though, that some people will use is they'll just take the um, statements of the um, various electrical bills and see what the monthly usage is. I would caution you, if you're going to use that approach, be sure that you use the um, bill 
those that are from the, the months that have the greatest usage because you don't want to base it on um, your, um, if you're in the south, you would want to do that in the summer where you're running the most air conditioning and having those heavier loads. Sometimes in the north, the heaviest loads come in the winter when they're running the heating and having all, everything on inside because nobody wants to go outside. So again, make sure that you get those largest load months. So installation basics. Um, if you have an air-cooled generator, which again is up to about 20 kW, most of those will come built with a built-in pad. That means you don't need to lay down the concrete slab. Um, you can lay down a concrete slab if you desire or if you're going to do what's called a stubs up app, um, installation. But again, for most installations not required, you just pour a little pea gravel down on a level surface and you drop the generator in. If you go over 20 kW, you're working with a liquid cooled product. Those are far heavier, and those you definitely are going to need to cut, um, pour that concrete slab before you do the installation. And make sure, what I recommend, put some piers in there that are going to get below the frost line. When you get into heavy duty units like that, you want to make sure you give yourself a good foundation to build on. So, with the concrete slab, do it the right way and get below that frost so it doesn't heave on you. Right. Um, the next thing you have for choice on is automatic transfer switches. And these are going to be the brains of the operation that keep everything flowing, whether the homeowner's there or not. Um, you're looking at the sizing, and you have choices of 100 amp, 200 amp, or 400 amp panels, depending again on the specific home. And you also have a choice of getting them with or without a load center. And the, that choice is based on are you running selected loads or are you running the whole house? If you're running the whole house, you don't need a load center. If you're running selected loads, you do. So those are some of the options. Um, you can get indoor or outdoor rated, um, depending on where you plan to place the transfer switch. And you also have the option of getting um, service entrance rated uh, or not. So um, again, those are some of the options you'll be able to choose on um, the transfer switch side. And then finally, you're gonna need two types of professionals on this installation. You're working with gas, so you need a gas professional, and you're working with electricity, so you need an electrical contractor. Um, so you need both types. Well, this is why I'm glad we see so many contractors showing up here. Remember, being a contractor and overseeing the whole job, you'll be able to hire these guys as subcontractors underneath you. So you don't have to worry about having to, to do everything yourself on it. What we need, too, is good professionals who can go out there and coordinate everything, because this is not an overnight process. It's usually about oh, two to maybe three weeks from start to finish, and you, being the overseer of the job, are going to be very valuable to the clients out there. So if you're not a licensed uh, electrician or plumber, don't be disappointed because there's still a big uh, hole for you guys to fill here. Right. And when we say the two to three weeks, actually the installation itself doesn't take all that long. Um, it's usually it's done within a day, but there are there's a process of ordering the generator, getting it brought to the site. Um, if you have to pour the concrete slab, you obviously need to do that in advance. So um, it's not something that you necessarily are going to um, think about it today and have it installed tomorrow. That's why the other part of the equation here is to educate your customers, plan ahead. Don't wait for a storm to come, that's too late. Start planning ahead now, think about a generator, get it installed while the weather's good, so when the bad weather comes in, you'll be all set, because remember, these are jobs, you have to pull permits, and you do have to get them inspected, so that puts a little bit of time on the job as well. Exactly. So, if you're a builder or a remodeler, putting in a generator at that time gives you a huge advantage. Um, it's going to be least expensive to do the installation when you're already um, working on the house rather than doing a retrofit later. Um, you can use a generator ready um, panel. And what that means is if you're already putting in a new distribution panel for, um, to take care of the home's electrical needs, um, there's product available now that actually takes a standard um, distribution panel and you can add the transfer switch into that panel. That saves you from having to put the separate box in and do all of the wiring over to a second box. Um, and when you do that at an installation, it's going to save a lot of costs at that point. You don't even have to install the generator at that point. You can just have that box put in, and down the road, your generator-ready house is going to be um, well-suited to being ready for um, someone to come in and add it very inexpensively. Do you mind if I expand on that just Absolutely. a little bit? As a contract, I'm going to tell you right now, what she was just talking about is a huge piece of information. 
that panel only costs about $60 more than the standard panel. So think about this. You're building a whole house, hundreds of thousands of dollars. For a $60 investment, you could put this panel in, and now you can tell your customer, this house is generator ready. How cool is that? What kind of sales tool is that? And then I'll give you one more example. I'll give someone who lives in a generator ready home one storm where they lose power, they'll be on the phone calling you up, yep, you're smiling, saying, come down, I'm halfway there, finish the job, and that's more work in your pocket. So again, with the, the trends changing in construction, this is gonna make more sense and more money for you now to build these generator-ready homes. Great. So that really brings us to the conclusion of the generator portion of this, and I know that Tom is to talk about um, the propane itself a little bit more, so. Tom, would you like to jump in? Hey, and let's hear it for Melody. This I told you. And, she and, is the queen of generators here. Good friend and great knowledge.